Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about unusual and out of the ordinary literature uh, that I've found in my travels. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a short story collection that I read because it is Short Story Tuesday. Uh, I, and I, I want to focus on a specific short story from there, one that is about uh, seeing things and uh, parks and, and stream of consciousness. I will be talking about Public Library by Ali Smith. An interesting cover. Uh, you have two people reading a book. Uh, when I say interesting, I'm actually, you know, I don't think it's actually interesting. It's really boring and, uh, you know, a perfect representation of this book, I suppose. Uh, I got this from my local library, my local public library. Uh, see what I did there? Um, make, sure, make sure to patronize your local libraries. Um, yeah, so for those who don't know, Ali Smith is a Scottish author. Um, she has been writing since the 1980s about, uh, you, you know, um, this kind of stuff, I guess. Um, if I if I if I if I can even define it, written a couple plays, um, written for TV shows, I think. Uh, wrote a lot of books, uh, and you know uh, has been nominated for multiple awards, uh, um, as people believe their work to be somewhat high quality. Um, yeah, and uh, Ali Smith is also. Um, lesbian gay uh the proper term there uh um which makes her one of the the first the first or one of the first uh um lgbt lgbtq authors that i've explored on this channel um that i, I think you know someone could be you know lgbtq and just not tell anybody about it uh, so, yeah, without further ado, let's talk about, uh, one of the short stories from this collection, The Definite Article. I will do a little summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. The Definite Article, uh, begins with the, a, a narrator, um, uh, on their way to a business meeting. They have just gotten off a, um, off the subway, uh, and they, their eye starts to sting, so they, they stop in a park and they start to take in their surroundings. Um, they begin to see everything that the park has to offer, and they begin to think about, uh, the world around them. They can Consider their own romantic past, uh, including the uh, partner they had with a uh, who who had a Mini Cooper car. Um, they consider bees and how the bees might be dying soon. Uh, and they also think about the history of the park and the various historical figures that have roamed through it. Um, the uh, the short story then ends with the narrator leaving. Um, and uh, considering um, a poem uh, about uh, Cupid complaining to their mother um, that the, uh, they were stung by a bee. Uh, and uh, Cupid's mother says, well, think about uh, how, that must mean, how, how that must feel to the, uh, to the uh, people you, you, you sting with your bow. Um, and, and that's where this, the story ends. In terms of analysis, despite this being a, a very short, short story, uh, there is, a, a, there is some, some, th some things to talk about. Uh, the first is um, the in a focus on eyes uh, and how the narrator can't exactly can't exactly see right at this moment because their eyes are stinging. But there's there's different ways to see the world, um, uh, uh, different ways to experience it through your senses. As the narrator takes in the park through the smells, uh, touch, their, the memory of of, uh, of the park. Uh, and uh, hearing what's going on in the park and, and thinking about the past. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's interesting that this is triggered by an eye irritation because it's uh, the narrator um, uh, learns that uh, there's multiple ways to see um, as they as they can't see. So you know that that's an interesting you know sort of thing that Ali Smith does in this story. And then another th interesting thing is um, the influence of the past and the present, as well as the people far away. Like this park is a is a is a is a fairly small park in um, in England somewhere. I think the story is set in London, uh, and um, 
uh, it, it doesn't seem to have that big of, uh, of an influence. Um, they just where people go, but it's still influenced by what, what's happened in the past. Um, uh, the narrator considers all the famous people, um, like Percy by Shelley and, and whatnot, who came to this park um, and interacted with it in some sort of way. And it seems like a place of historical significance in that way. And then they also consider uh, um, the people far away who have an impact impact on the park, such as the beekeepers in New Zealand who exported some bees to um, to England to help with the with dying beehives. And so um, the the people in New Zealand also have an influence on this park. Uh, so it's um, it's not just the people there uh, who um, who have somewhat of an influence the the world the world around influences the park and the park influences the people around it uh because it's clearly having an effect on the narrator uh, near the end of the story uh the narrator notes that the park it itself is a character in the story um the uh, except where the where the character has a beginning and, and an end and like the historical people who who experience the park have a beginning or an end. The park itself doesn't seem to have a beginning or an end. It it seems to have existed forever, even though that that's not really true. Like the park um, will be there long after the narrator leaves. Somebody else will will be, will be able to experience this area, and even after like humanity is gone and or the park shuts down, like this area will still exist, and people will be able to take it in. And they'll, uh, the park will be able to, to influence those people as well. Um, so the, the park um, is a character in the story. And it'll be a character in the future as well as um, the past. So there are some de definite hang-ups with this story. Uh, the first issue that I have is um, with, the, with the stream of consciousness writing. Uh, stream of consciousness is, is just like writing out your thoughts as they go along. Um, or somebody else's thoughts or something like that. It's not so linear um, in writing as you typically see in books. Uh, it, it's more um, just pen to paper, writing things out, and, and maybe editing later if necessary, but probably not. Uh, lots of authors do it, and I feel like no author really does it in a, to a great to no real no author is really good at it, and that's that's harsh to say. But stream of consciousness is a, is is kind of really hard to master, and I don't think anyone ever truly does um, in a way that makes their writing seem comprehensible in any sort of way. Um, uh, there's a good example of this that I wanna, I wanna talk about. So the narrator is just, you know, reflecting on the world and they say, but it was turning into one of the days in January that spring sends ahead of itself. The fog would burn off. It was burning off right now. It was clearing. I could see there were magpies, there were pigeons, there were all sorts of birds everywhere. When was the last time I had looked at a blackbird or at a robin? When was the last time I had looked properly at anything? There were runners on the park's paths. There was a cordon of very young school children out on, a, on a, out on a trip in the middle of the day. There was a man whistling, walking ahead, holding a can of skull ahead of himself. He was holding the can like a compass. There was a man in a wheelchair being wheeled by a boy. The boy looked very like him. There was a man with a camera on a tripod. He was filming a woman who stopped to feed a squirrel. There was a woman doing a sideways stepping walking exercise. There were two joggers and a dog, the dog keeping the pace beside them. Looked full of happiness and there were patterns everywhere in the line of benches stretching toward and away from me. In the fountains and the urns and the trees and the dyed back tied tidy beds of flower. And that's when I remembered something I hadn't thought about it in years. It's back when I'm 25. We've been together for six weeks. We've no money. It's it's my birthday, and as a birthday present, you sit me down and blindfold me. You lead me by the hand, blindfolded out to the flat to where your old many with the holes in the floor is parked. You guide me into the car, and then you drive me. I have no idea where. And from there, it just goes on and on and on and on and on, and it's just one long paragraph, and it's very stream of consciousness stream of consciousness writing, and I don't like it. Like it just seems like the narrator is listing things at a certain point and none of this serves the story at all if there even is a story to be told and it at a certain point it just it gets hard to read and this entire book is filled with this like like do something else Ally Smith <laughs> um anyway that's that's just one thing I don't like about it
this story is very go nowhere and as i just noted like it's it's filled with a whole bunch of go nowhere stories that that don't really tell anything that don't really give you any hints as to what it's about and in between those stories there's a bunch of authors talking about how they like libraries and public libraries are are very cool and i don't really at a certain point, I don't really get who this is for. Is this for authors? Is this for people who go to public libraries? Um, this doesn't, I don't know who the audience for this book is for. It largely, to me, it seems like it's written for um, for other writers. And it doesn't really seem like it's meant to be read by, by people like me who are, who are interested in reading uh, uh, fascinating short story collections. It just... It doesn't seem to have a target. It feels like I'm not the target audience, but then it, that, that no one is really the target audience apart from other writers, and it's really weird when you get meta meta literature like that. Uh, I say weird, but like this is the first time I've ever encountered something as as kind of not fun as this to read. Anyway, those are my thoughts on uh, public library and the definite article. A unusual short story that doesn't seem to tell an actual story. The only reason I talked about the definite article was because it was one of the few short stories in the collection that had a, a plot that I could follow and that I wanted to talk about. I seriously just considered, you know, tossing this book aside and, and trying to find something else to talk about on, on Short Story Tuesday. But ultimately, I decided to go with this book. I don't like talking, I don't like like bad mouthing books and saying mean things about it, um, uh, especially when it's a short story, because, you know, what does that what does that accomplish? But I, I guess you know I, I picked it out, so I got I got to talk about it. Uh, yeah, so uh, I I didn't like it. Um, I don't recommend it. I can see that there might be some people out there who appreciate stream of consciousness writing, but I'm not one of them. Uh, and if you are, absolutely go go seek this out. Um, if you have do you have something to say about my review, or you simply want to talk about stream of consciousness writing, or you've read this book before, comment below. We can have a discussion about that. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can uh, we can talk more about uh, stream of cautious consciousness. It's hard to say with a with a larger audience, and uh, so we can you know uh, talk more about this book. Uh, and in in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck with your weird and eye stinging travels. Uh, have fun.